الحمد لله يا ضعف ما حمله جميع خلقي كما يحبه ويرضى اللهم صل على محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأكرة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاة سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم أن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من حسن الإسلام المرء تركه ما لا يعني حديث حسن رواه الترمذي وغيره هكذا First of all, we give all praise and all thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the favors and bounties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bestow us. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us health and strength in this month of Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to give us the tawfiq so that we could make the most of the month of Ramadan. We also send salat and salam on his last and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent as the Khatim al nabiyyin the seal of all the prophets who is also known as the Imam al-Anbiya, the leader of all the prophets and we should be very happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen us to be in the, in the Ummah or in the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as we continue today we will be doing Imam understanding Imam An Nawawi's Fatih Hadith, which we are on number twelve, Hadith number twelve, and this Hadith, uh, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke to us about manners and our behavior. Islam is not uh, translated as religion. Islam is merely a way of life, and Islam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught us how to live. Islam is not a religion that only teaches us how to pray, how to fast, how to do ibadat, but it also teaches us each and every aspect of our life, how to be, how to live our lives, how to, how to bathe, how to use the washroom, how to deal with your neighbor, how to deal with your friend, how to be with, in your business, how to transact when, with your business partners. And each and every aspect of our life, Islam deals with in details for us to to be better human beings, to, for us to be better people so that Allah will be happy with us as well as the people around us because of our behavior and our manners, they will also be good with us. Welcome Marco, continuing with Imam an nawis for the Hadith. In this Hadith, it was narrated, the translation from Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He says that he Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said من حسن الإسلام المرئي From the goodness or from the perfection of Islam of a man is that تركهو ما لا يعني is that he leaves what does not concern him And this hadith is Hassanun and it is narrated by Imam At-Tirmizi This hadith it is known as the foundation of manners and behaviors and etiquettes in Islam this hadith teaches us our behavior, our manners, that things that does not concern us, we should leave it off. First, for me to be a good Muslim, for me to be a good believer, is that those things that does not concern me, I should leave it off. That is not my business, I should leave that off. That is somebody else's business, leave them with their business, let they try and deal with their business. But my, what concern me, should be my business. Whatever, <clears throat> I should not, partake in, in worrying about other things that does not concern me. Imam Ibn Abi Zaid al-Qairawani, he mentions that in the hadiths that deals with good manners, there are four hadiths that builds the, the foundation and the main principles of good conduct and of good manners and good behaviors and good etiquettes. 
He says these four hadiths, the first one he mentioned on the list is this hadith which we are doing. That is, min husn al-islam al-mar'i tarku ma la ya'ni. That the goodness or the perfection of Islam of anyone is that he leaves what does not concern him. The second hadith that he says is the basic foundation of behavior and etiquette. He says is the hadith that Rasulullah he says, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir fal yakhul khayran aw liyasmut. Is that whoever believes in Allah in the last day, let him speak good or let him remain quiet. And the third hadith he says, is the hadith when a sahabi came to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Awsini, advise me, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, La taqdab, do not get angry. He says, La taqdab, do not get angry. Faraddada miraran, he asks again, advise me. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, don't get angry. He asks him again, advise me. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, don't get angry. So this was the third hadith. And the fourth is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu sallam, he says, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخي ما يحب لنفسي that no one of you truly believes until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself only then he could be a true believer so these are the four hadiths that, that builds the aspect of behavior and etiquette in Islam <coughs> There's what are those things that does not concern us? Rasulullah is saying, leave off those things that doesn't concern us. But what are those things that doesn't concern us? What will be considered to be things that doesn't concern me that I need to stay away from? That I need to consider none of my business? Are these are those things that has no benefit to this life. Things that will not benefit us in this life <clears throat> that will not benefit us in the Akhirah in terms of our belief. So things that I need to believe in and if I was to believe in this, it will not benefit me in this life as well it will not benefit me in the hereafter, that does not concern me. That should not concern me because it will not, that kind of belief will not benefit me in this life as well as the next life. As well as uh, <clears throat> our speeches. If a speech cannot benefit me in this life, as well as it will not benefit me in the next life, then that speech does not concern me. Those kind of speeches, for me to say those kind of things, if it cannot benefit me here as well as in the next life, I do not need to say that. So we need to, and that comes with a hadith of if you have nothing good to say, remain quiet, remain silent. So we need to look first at our speeches as well. There are some speeches that may concern us, some speeches that will not concern us. Those that does not concern us will be those that will not bring any benefit in this life as well as in the next life. As well as our actions. Those actions that will not benefit me in this life and in the next life, those actions uh, does not concern me. I should stay away from those actions as well. If an action, if my, I'm doing this action and I'm, I'm not going to get any benefit here, as well as I'm not going to get any benefit in the next life, then why should I do that? I should stay away from that. And some of the, some of the actions sometimes that we do that brings no benefit in both this life and the next life, but yet we continue to do them. We continue to consider them our business and we continue to concern about them and want to be involved in them. For example, to go to the mall. If we need to go to the mall, sometimes we need to, to buy something. Yes, we go to buy. But there are sometimes, uh, some of us, we do not want anything from the mall. We do not want to buy anything. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to lime and gape. So I'm going to go and I'm going to walk around the entire mall, not to buy anything, just to walk for walking sake and just walk around the entire mall. This is Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, Ab Gadal Bilaru Ilallahi Aswakuha. It says the most hated place in the sight of Allah is the Aswak, is the bazaars. Is the bazaars and the malls, these are the most hated places in the sight of Allah. And yet we are using there to go as a means of relaxing. We are using the, the malls to go as a place for us to find a, a sort of contentment and a sort of relaxation. When it is considered to be the most hated place. The malls should be places that we only go to buy things. If we need something, we go... We go to buy a specific thing and we leave. 
Similarly, movies. Some of us, we are sit down and we watch movies for three, four hours, one movie after the next. What benefit will that bring in this world as the next? It brings no benefit to us. So we have wasted three hours, we have wasted two hours sitting, dealing, involving in something that will not bring benefit in this life as the next, but we are still doing it. We are still involving in it. Those are things that does not concern us. So those are things that Rasulullah Sallallahu tells us, that does not concern you. That should, that should not have any concern in your life. And that is what you should stay away from. As well as your speeches, there are many things that we say. And there, <clears throat> there's a golden rule which I learned when I was very small about the two T's. There are two T's which we, we most of the time we mix up these two T's. And the two T's are talking and thinking. Talk and think. What we normally do in our time is that we talk and then we start to think. We talk and then think. When we are supposed to think and then talk, we do the opposite. And that is why it's, a lot of time it puts us in trouble. We start to talk, we talk about this, we talk about that. Not realizing the, the consequence, not thinking about the consequence of if I say this, what will happen? If I say that, what will happen? And we continue to talk and talk and talk without thinking. But what we should be doing, we should be thinking first. I should be thinking, the first thing is think. I should think, if I was to say this, what benefit will it bring? If I was to say this, what harm will, will, will be the outcome? What will be the outcome of it? What consequences will be? by me saying these kind of words or by my speeches like that we should be thinking about that first and then we should talk so we we need to understand those two t's and don't mix them up try to always think and then talk and we should not be talking and then thinking because by the time we we talk and then start to think it will be too late because it had already come out from our mouth or whatever comes out from our lips and our tongue it is hard for it to go back in so we need to be careful with those two T's. This hadith also help us to avoid a lot of societal problems. There are many problems in society today. A lot of families do not talk to one another. A lot of parents, they are not talking to their children. A lot of children are not talking to their parents. A lot of relatives not uh, being close with their other relatives. They, they have this, they do not want to see them, they do not want to, want to have anything to do with them. And that is because of they're not, neighbors are not talking to each other. Brothers come into the masjid and they have this section and that section, this one is not talking to that one. And this normally, <clears throat> this normally happens most of the time when we cannot mind our own business, to put it in simple words. When we are always fast and we want to push ourselves in this business and that business and we want to spread what this one did and we want to spread what that one did and we want to gossip about this one and gossip about that one and we want to backbite this one and backbite that one we want to slander him, we want to slander her and then when those individuals heard that this so and so said so on about me and so and so did that that starts to have a little fraction that those individuals start to look at you differently start to look at you in a way that you will not like start to look at you in a different aspect and a different way so if we were to use this hadith and only if we hear something about an individual we hear this individual said so and so instead of I to go and spread it to everyone that does not concern me if I could do something to assist him or I could correct him by myself I will go but for me to spread it to 100 people or to 20 or to 40 people about this individual, that, uh, that will not bring any benefit to me, that will only bring harm to me. So instead of I to do that, if I was to stay away from that, that individual will look at me in a better way, as well as everybody will be talking to each other, everybody will be living happily. Because most of the societal problems comes with bickering and gossiping and backbiting and slandering. And if everyone was to mind their own business, if everyone was to only do those things that concern them, then that will not be the case and everyone will be able to live happily. Everyone, families will be able to live happily with their families, relative with relative, friends with friends, neighbors with neighbors, 
brothers and sisters in the masjid, everybody will be together as long as we practice on this hadith and do not, um, we leave off those things which do not concern us. Welcome back on hadith number 12 of <coughs> hadith number 12 of Imam an nawis for the hadith. Here Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that a believer, he should not, he should leave out those things that does not concern him. This another hadith right in Tirmizi, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, be keen. Be keen with what is beneficial to you. Those things which are beneficial to you, be keen about it and try to do it. Try to practice it, try to get the benefit from it. And seek help from Allah and do not be reckless. Seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help and do not be reckless. This hadith also teaches us of time management. It teaches us how to spend our time. Many a times our days, are, our days would go by. Our days would run so much. There are so much of things that we have planned out. We have planned, we have had a whole list of things. And many of us can attest to this. That when a day comes, we have a list of a few items well. And we are trying to achieve all this which I have placed on my list. I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do that. And many of the time, our day would finish because of the time moving so fast, our day would finish. And sometimes only half of what we had on the list we were able to do. Only quarter sometimes what was on the list we were able to do, we have to put over some to the other day. And this is what Rasul is teaching us in his hadith as well, is to prioritize our time. If we were to push aside those things that does not concern us, we will save a lot of our time. And by saving so much of time and not worrying or not, not being involved with other people's business, the time that we will save in backbiting and slandering, the time that we will save in picking up the phone and calling this one and that one to spread news about people, that time we are able to use it to gain more benefit for ourselves. We could use that time to read a few eyes of the Quran. We could use that time to make some dhikr. We could use that time to do some more research about our Islam, to understand our Islam more. So here Rasulullah is also teaching us of time management, how to spend our time and do not waste our time because our time is precious as well. So we should not be involved in things. We should not be involved in things that will waste our time. Those things that does not concern us and that will waste our time, we should not be involved in that. But we should be involved in those things that will bring benefit to us. And if we were to push aside those things that has no benefit, we will have enough time to do those things that will bring benefit into our lives. <clears throat> but as true believers, what are the things that we should be involved in? What should have some concern to us? All the time we are talking about things that does not concern us, but what as Muslims should be our concern? What should we be concerned about? One of the things that we should need to be concerned about is those things which are wajib, those things which are compulsory, those things which are obligatory for us to do. We need to know these things which are compulsory and it is a concern to us to try to implement them. Those things which are mandub, those things which are mustahab, desirable, we should, we should learn about them, we should know about them. That is our concern to see how much of it could reach in our lives. And as long as we have enough time, we'll, it'll be easy for us to implement it. As well as we should know what is haram, we should know what is haram. We should know what is haram, what is unlawful, what is prohibited. We should know what is dislike, so that we are able to stay away from it. So these are the things that should concern us. There are also things which are known as fard al-ayn. And fard al-ayn are those compulsory actions that each individual has to do by themselves. So individual has to do, for example, our salat. Nobody can pray salat for us. Nobody can come and say, I'm going to do, you stand up and I'm going to do the ruku for you. Or you stand up, I'm going to do the ruku and sajda, you just continue to stand, I will do that for you. Nobody could do that. Nobody could say, you know what, you, you rest today, you do not pray zohar today, I'll pray zohar for you. No, that cannot happen. For the ayn are certain actions which is compulsory that each individual has to do by themselves. 
So those actions which are further line, we need to be, that is our concern. That should concern us and that is something that we should make sure we are involved in and we should make sure that we do. Also there are something which known as Fadal Kifaya. Fadal Kifaya is, is that which is composed on the community. For example, a Janazah that is composed on the community. If a few persons of the community does it, then the entire community is resolved of that. If nobody from the community does it, then the entire community becomes sinful. <coughs> Similarly, for the, the action of Itikaf, it is known it is something that the community, at least one person, should do. So we have something which is known as Fadl Kifaya, for example, the Janaza, which is Fadl Kifaya, we should ensure that we do. Now, this should be a concern to us. If everybody was to say that this is a concern to me, I want to make sure I am that one who will fulfill it for my community. I want to be the one to fulfill it for my community. So this is a concern. We put aside everything to say, you know what, I want to be the one that will be there to stand up for my community and to make sure that my community does not fall into sin. So this should be our concern, Father Kifaya, as well as ta'muruna bil ma'roof wa tanhauna anil munkar. Enjoying what is good and staying away from what is evil and what is bad. First, enjoying what is good, that should be my concern. That, sh that is what I should be concerned about. I should be concerned that everyone is doing the right thing. I should be concerned if people are not doing the right thing, I should try to correct them. That should be my concern. Not for me to spread their, their evil or to spread their wrongdoing, but my concern is to try to rectify it. My concern is to try to encourage them to do more good deeds, to encourage them to only do that which is right. And my concern is to, is to Try to encourage them to stay away from that which is wrong. Try to encourage them to remove themselves from those wrong things which they are doing and only do those things which are good. That is a concern should be in our mind. As well to improve, my concern should be to improve my community. I should be concerned about myself to improve myself. And all of us, each and every human being, no one of us, we are perfect. All of us have shortcomings. And all of us have room for improvement. So my concern should be, how could I improve myself? How could I improve my acts of ibadat? I'm, I'm, I'm not praying my five daily salat, I need to improve. I need to start to ensure that I pray my five daily salat. All right, I'm praying my five daily salat. I need to, what concern me now? I need to make sure I pray most of it in the masjid. I'm praying that in the masjid now. All right, I'm praying the fire. There are so much of sunnah and nafsa salat. I need to start to implement that. I'm not waking up for tahajjud. I could implement that. So each and every, each and every nafil, we need to concern about ourselves. So the concern that we should have is for the betterment for ourselves to improve ourselves. As well as we are coming to our masjid, we, we come and we see I alone praying the salat, three, four people praying the salat. A community that have 50 to 60 homes and only 3 people in the masjid for Maghrib, 4 people in the masjid for Isha. Am I contented with that? No. That is, should be my concern. I should concern, why is it that only, only 3 of us pray in Salat? Why is it that only 10 of us come into pray Salat? So my concern, a concern should be there that I should be concerned. Why is it that these people are not coming? I need to go out and try to get them to come. Not that I'm going to sit in a masjid and pray and say, all right, let Allah take care of everything. No, I need to go. That is my concern. So we have a lot of things to concern about. So those things which does not concern us, we should leave them so that we'll have enough time to take a, think about those things that really concern us because there's a lot of things that concern us that we, we push aside. And that is the, the thing. We, we do the opposite. What concerns us we we stay away from it and what do not concern us we want to indulge in it we should take the teachings from rasul here that he has taught us that things that does not concern us we should leave it off so that we'll have enough time in order to do all those things which really concerns us and that will bring a lot of benefit into our life and that will help us so we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the tawfiq especially in this month of ramadan that 
we do those things which concern us so that we will gain benefit, we will gain the full maximum blessings of this month of Ramadan, and that after the month of Ramadan we are changed people, we do not go back to those bad habits, but we continue to be we continue to be with the same kind of practices you are doing in the month of Ramadan. May Allah accept all of our good deeds. Wa akhru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.